In this video, I want to show that entropy is a function of state, that is, a complete differential. Let's derive it from the second law of mechanics by considering a system of particles, which are characterized by a specific Maxwell's distribution. So the system, the overall system made up of these particles, is characterized by a specific Maxwell's distribution. And I will uh, recall this distribution later on. For the system, we can write the Lagrange equations. So we can write that the derivative with respect to time of the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to q dot j. So we have the coordinates q1, q2, dot dot dot, qn minus derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to qj equal to fj. So fj is the jth component of a non-conservative force. Multiply this equation here by a virtual displacement delta qj. I'm going to call it delta qj, where this delta here represents just a small perturbation of the coordinates. So it's a small displacement, a virtual displacement. And we are going to sum over j. And we are also going to use Einstein's summation convention for repeated indices. So let me rewrite it. We have d over dt dl dq dot j multiplied by delta qj minus derivative of l with respect to qj times delta qj equal to fj delta qj, like this. And you have to assume that we are summing over j because this index j is repeated here. And fj times delta qj is work performed by non-conservative forces. We can call it delta q. So this is heat because it's due to non-conservative forces. And we are going to rewrite this term here. So let me rewrite the equation below. We can rewrite it as derivative with respect to time of dl dq dot j. And then I'm going to put this delta qj inside the derivative. So we have delta qj. And then we have minus delta L over d q dot j times delta q dot j. So in this case, we are going to subtract this term from this expression in order to obtain this expression back, if you think about it. Because the derivative with respect to time of delta q j is equal to delta times the derivative with respect to time of qj, so this is delta q dot j. So I'm using this trick here in order to find this expression back. So that's just simple math. And then we have minus this term. So it's del dqj delta qj equal to delta q, just like this. Now the Lagrangian L can be written as the kinetic energy capital T minus V, the potential energy. And for the kinetic energy, since we have a system of particles, we can write one half mj, the mass of the jth particle times x dot j squared. So in this case, please notice that I have used xj or x dot j is the derivative of xj if you want and the coordinates xj which represents the position of the particles does not have to be equal to the coordinates qj so this xj does not have to represent qj they are not equal necessarily but they must be related due to a functional relationship like x dot j for example is equal to dxj with respect to d, q, k, q dot k. So in this case, we are summing over k 
on the right and this is an expression which relates x dot j to q dot j because the xj's depend on the qk's if you want so xj or x whatever whatever index you want to use but let's say xj is a function of q1 q2 dot 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 qn and we can simply say xj is a function of the q's like this so simple as that and then here we have to subtract of course the potential v this is simply due to the fact that we can use different coordinates to describe our system for example we can use the coordinates x1 x2 dot 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 xn and then we also need the velocities x dot one dot 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 x dot n or we can use q1 q2 dot 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 qn q dot one dot 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 q dot n and the transformation which allows us to pass from this set of coordinates and velocities to this other set or vice versa is the so-called canonical transformation and i have already described these canonical transformations in another video but essentially these transformations are characterized by a jacobian which is equal to one in order to preserve the hamiltonian equations then let's also write the kinetic energy in another form so we can write capital t equal to one half mj and then we have derivative of xj with respect to qi derivative of xj with respect to qk and then we have q dot i q dot k so you can see that we can rewrite this part like this by using this transformation here and in particular we can put together these three expressions by summing over j so here you have to sum over j and this will be a matrix a i k which will depend on q on the q's right and this multiplies q dot i q dot k like that from this expression you can see that if you take the derivative of the kinetic energy with respect to q dot j and you multiply by q dot j you will simply get twice the kinetic energy it's simple to see it's quite easy to to see that from this expression and this is useful because we will use it here in particular we can rewrite this equation in this form so we have derivative with respect to time of we can rewrite this displacement delta qj as q dot j times delta t like this so this is quite intuitive don't think too much about the meaning of this curly d or the differential they are quite similar so we are using some infinitesimal displacements some independent displacements independent because we can change for example delta q1 independently of delta q2 and something similar for delta q3 and so on and so forth now by using this relation we can write twice kinetic energy times delta t and then we have minus you can see here that we have minus dl over dq dot j times delta q dot j minus dl over dq j delta q j and this is simply minus delta l if you think about it so we have minus delta t because delta l is equal to delta t minus delta v but we have a minus sign here so we have minus minus delta v so here we will have a plus so i can write simply plus delta v equal to delta q like this and now we can also put this delta t out of the derivative because the derivative with respect to time of delta t since we know that 
this delta is independent of this derivative. So we can change the order between these two operators. So we can rewrite delta of d over dt of t. This is quite informal, okay? But it's quite easy to visualize it. It is quite intuitive. So you have to try to use intuition without too much mathematical rigor, which will only, of course, put you in a position to not accept anything. But anyway, the derivative of time with respect to time is equal to one, so it's a constant, and the variation, the small change of a constant will be zero. Okay? So we can also rewrite our equation like this. We have twice the derivative of the kinetic energy, I will call it t dot times delta t minus delta t plus delta v equal to delta q. Okay, so we have not been too rigorous, okay? But now we are going to call t dot times delta t here. This will be the variation of the kinetic energy. Because yes, in principle, we have t dot equal to dt over dt, like this. But this is equal to delta t over delta t that we indicated in this fashion. Okay, so you can also do the same thing by considering differentials if you want, by using this symbol instead of this symbol. It doesn't really matter too much. You can do that. If you think about it, you can also do that. That's possible. Another, another, another way to avoid using differentials, for example, is to multiply by derivatives. So instead of multiplying by delta qj, this expression here, you can multiply by q dot j, both sides. So instead of having fj delta qj, you have fj q dot j. And then you can also multiply by dt. And in that way, you can try to derive these expressions below here. But finally, you will get the same result. Even if you change this notation, if you call this delta, you call it d, it's more important that you understand the meaning, the physical meaning of this. So if you understand the physical meaning, the mathematical meaning would be easier to understand. Because if you only focus on the mathematics, well, sometimes it quite be difficult to accept all these steps. So you have to try to do to tackle this problem in different from different angles in different ways, so that you will you will familiarize with uh, these steps. It can be done in different ways, and I'm saying this, I'm stressing this because I have been asked asked several times in my courses because I have done something like this also, for for example, in the course on special relativity. But uh, yeah, and that of course. Uh, let's say, confused some students. And I understand that, I accept that. It might be confusing. But you also have to do, you, have also, you also have to make your own effort to try to understand these meanings, all these symbols. Because if you don't put in your effort, well, a teacher might not be enough in order for you to understand all the details. Because in here, we're also talking about details. and I have to stress that it's important for you to understand these details, especially if you are a student of physics, of mathematics. You should be able to reason in this way. This will help you. This will help your reasoning in general. But anyway, let's move on. Sorry about this. Let's move on. Here we can also write 2 delta t minus delta t will become delta t plus delta v equal to delta q. Like this.